On February 18, 1950, John Wilden Hughes Jr. was born in Lansing, Michigan, the son of a salesman and a volunteer. He spent the first 12 years of his life in Gross Point, Michigan, where he was a fan of the Detroit Red Wings. In 1963, Hughes' family moved to Northbrook, Illinois, a suburb of Chicago, where his father found work selling roofing materials. He attended Grove Middle School and Glenbrook North High School, which gave him inspiration for the films that eventually made his reputation. He met Nancy Ludwig, his future wife, in high school. Hughes enrolled in the University of Arizona, but dropped out. After dropping out, Hughes began selling jokes to well-established performers such as Rodney Dangerfield and Joan Rivers. Hughes used his jokes to get an entry-level job at Needham, Harper & Steers as an advertising copywriter in Chicago in 1970 and later in 1974 at Leo Burnett Worldwide. Hughes' work on the Virginia Slims account frequently took him to the Philip Morris headquarters in New York City, which allowed him to visit the offices of National Lampoon magazine. Soon thereafter, he became a regular contributor. One of Hughes' first stories, inspired by his family trips as a child, was Vacation 58, which later became the basis for National Lampoon's Vacation. His first credit screenplay, National Lampoon's Class Reunion, was written while, while he was still on the staff of the magazine. This movie was a big box office flop, but his next screenplay, Mr. Mom, was a big hit. As a result, he got a three-film deal with Universal Pictures. Hughes' directorial debut, 16 Candles, released in 1984, won almost unanimous praise when it was released. This led to a string of movies about teenage life, including The Breakfast Club, released in 1985, Weird Science, also released in 1985, and Ferris Bueller's Day Off, released in 1986, all of which he wrote and directed. There was also Pretty in Pink, released in 1986, and Some Kind of Wonderful, released in 1987, which he wrote and produced. But to be, avoid being pigeonholed as a maker of only teen movies, Hughes branched out in 1987 by writing, directing, and producing the hit comedy Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, starring Steve Martin and John Candy. That my dad's coming home for the holiday. By a cruel twist of fate. Welcome to Wichita. Steve Martin and John Candy have just oh. become traveling companions. Ooh. Where are you? I'm in a motel. I spent the night with this guy I met on the plane. Hallelujah. Are you crazy? You shared a motel room with a stranger? Steve Martin and John Candy. Wow! In planes, trains, and automobiles. Daddy! Rated R. Now playing at a theater near you. What I thought I'd do for this movie is rather than do a synopsis and movie review of this excellent movie, I instead list some observations I have about planes, trains, and automobiles. Number one, the deleted scenes. I was first clued into the existence of deleted scenes uh, with a scene towards the end of the movie where uh, the burnout car is stopped by a state trooper played by Michael McKeon of Laver Laverne Shirley, Lenny and Squig Tones, and Spinal Tap fame. Um, State Trooper's jacket has a Wisconsin State Patrol patch. This is because the original cut had Neil and Dell overshooting Chicago, and the original cut went to a bit more exposition on this detail. The State Trooper says something like, uh, you'll never get to Chicago going in this direction. Somebody asked John Hughes about this, and he said that the original cut of the movie was over three hours long. Why is the original cut so long? Well, it's because John Hughes was a prolific writer, um, and he would shoot um, more scenes than he would need, need for a movie. Um, he would also ask his um, actors to improvise uh, and just, like, kind of be funny. Um, so, so, and basically what happened was Paramount Pictures asked him to cut the movie, so he cut it down to two hours. They asked him to cut the movie some more, so he cut it down to the final cut, which was like about an hour and a half long. Um, so, and there's a lot of things that are that are left out of the from the original cut to the final cut. The original cut has a subplot where Neil's wife thinks Neil is cheating on him. So it's basically 
um, the guy who who says at the beginning of the movie you'll never make the six he actually he's a, a colleague of Neil's and he actually uh, had a later flight than Neil's and he arrived in Chicago on time so this makes uh, this makes his wife suspicious that uh, that Neil was diverted to Wichita um and so, and the scene where where Dell buys a pizza is cut to where he's like basically the 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 um the the pizza delivery guy is is rude to him. So he only he gives him like a a, a dollar tip, and he thinks the the pizza delivery guy thinks that this is an insult. So he comes back and robs them later on. He's just like basically at the the motel, and like. Um, so this is like goes into a little bit more explanation on that. Um, so, um, and the only scene that, that is, is in the lead scene is the scene that was on the DVD that I had, which, um, is the scene where, where they, they get the in-flight, in-flight, uh, dinner and uh, Dell is describing the different um, meals that he gets on different flights. Um, this is a scene that would uh, that they they put in that they put in in the movie in when they when they showed the movie on TV. Um, rather than put in the marathon rental car scene, which is laden with f bombs. Um, so they, they've cut that and they put in the, the, uh, dinner, the in-flight dinner scene. Um, so this was, was known to exist, but however, there's, um, there's a lot longer cut of, you know, this basically much deleted footage that was not available. Um, and John Hughes said that the original footage was probably like in a film vault it was probably it had deteriorated by then. Well, John Hughes died in 2009, so that would seem to... Uh, uh, the quest for the original cut of the movie seemed to be a lost cause. Or was it? Uh, finally, in October 2022, Paramount announced a 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray release, which included 75 minutes of deleted and extended footage. Uh... Most of which was thought to be lost, but was rediscovered and cleaned up for the from the from the John Hughes archive, mostly from videotapes, uh, VCRs. Um, so this is like John Hughes would um, give out scenes to actor a actors for debt um, that he he like give them scenes that that uh, they could show to, to other to you know. Uh, that they could show the studios that they, you know, they, they actually worked in. So, you know, this is something that existed. Unfortunately, it, it had, it was basically like VHS quality. So it's not as good as the, as the final cut of the movie. Uh, but nevertheless, it's still available. Um, so that's why I'm recommending is that I'm not recommending that you get the DVD that I bought, which is, it was only like, it was less than, it's about like seven dollars and change um but it didn't include a lot of the scenes um it only included the uh the in-flight dinner scene it did not include many of the, many of the deleted scenes so i'm recommending that you get the i'll get get the blu-ray of this which unfortunately is um a lot more than low budget reviews would would um sanction um, it's about like 1999, but you can get it used for 8.99, and uh, so you can get it used. Um, and, and I guess you get splurge for this. Um, so anyway, that having been said, there's number two, uh, which is the final cut of the movie. The final cut of the movie is excellent. Um, and you get an appreciation for John Hughes. The producer um, coming up with an excellent 
cut of the movie, which doesn't explain a lot. Um, in fact, you know, maybe maybe like the the final cut explains too much. Um, so the final cut is excellent, and so basically, this is the, Planes, Frames, and Automobile is an excellent movie that nevertheless leaves us hungry for more, hungry for the deleted scenes, which you can get in the uh, you know, on the Blu-ray version of this. Um, number three, the rental car scene. So there's a scene where. Um, Neil Page tries to rent a car and he discovers that the car isn't in the space that it, that uh, that it was supposed to be in um, so he has to go go back to the like to to the uh, rental car place where, where he rented the car from which is like if um, several miles away so he has to walk back and he like uh, he drops like 19 F-bombs in this scene um, so this this movie took this from being a PG or PG-13 movie to a hard R um, so this is like the he he uh, Lashes into this rental car uh, agent who's played by Edie McClurg, by the way. Um, so, uh, that having been said, I think the rental car scene was entirely justified because it, it, uh, it you know, it describes like how frustrated Neil was. But uh, also, the rental car scene is cut from the TV release of uh, this movie. And um, so a lot of them, they cut the they cut the scene and they put in the airline the airline dinner scene. Um, so that's a, another observation. Um, Hughes got the number four is Hughes got the idea from his own experience when they asked uh, John Hughes what what his idea for planes, trains, and automobiles was. He said that he was uh, he had a flight to Chicago. And uh, it was diverted to Wichita. So, you know, it's like, just like Vacation, National Lampoon's Vacation was based on Vacation 58, which itself was based on a, a vacation that his family had when they were living in Gross Point, Michigan. Um, this a movie was based on his own experience. Um, and there's number five. Uh, how realistic is it for a traveling salesman to be homeless? Um, so somebody asked about this in, 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 on a thread, and some one of the, the people uh, who was, said that uh, he was actually a traveling salesman when he was young, and basically he didn't have a home, and he would like, he, like I think his. Uh, Friends of the family, his friends uh, got his mail, and uh, so basically, like, I mean, at that point, I think if you're if you're a traveling salesman and you're on the road so much, basically, a home, a house is just a place for your stuff. So if you can avoid it, uh, you can have low overhead. So yes, it's somewhat realistic. Well, that's it for this video. Like and comment on the video and subscribe so you'll be informed of the latest low budget review. Um, so the next video is probably going going to be about my upgrade to uh, Pentium 4. Everything went bad with the Think Center M51. Um, I disconnected the SATA connector and unfortunately this ripped out the connector to the SATA drive. So yeah, kind of everything went badly. So I'm gonna upgrade to Pentium 4. So I'm probably going to add an SSD and a video card for this. So stay tuned for that in the next video. As always, thanks for watching.